blood that is not like any animal blood is not any human blood power. Your blood is man diluted with God is unblemished God. And your blood still flow in now God. Even as we reflect the name of God. Wash us afresh with your blood of God. There is someone who needs the blood in your family. There is someone who is crying out forever. We send for the blood in the mighty name of Jesus. The words that by your stripes we are healed. And we thank the God that you are still in the healing business right now in the mighty name of Jesus. For those who are sick, for those who feel that they are dying, oh God, we thank you, God, that even though, God, that you said that you are the resurrection and the life, those who feel that their bodies is coming to an end, oh God, we pray for your strength upon them to run for God. Let your resurrected power just rest upon someone tonight, oh God. As we lift our hands to you, God, give us strength, oh God. And rise up us even now in the mighty name of Jesus. Confusion in our family. We pray for families today, oh God. Hallelujah. We pray for families. Open your mouth and pray for families. We pray the curse over the families, even oh God. Father turning against wife and wife turning against husband, children turning against each other, oh God, against confusion. But in the name of Jesus, we speak peace. The peace that passes all understanding. We speak peace to our household in the mighty name of Jesus. We shut the mouth of the enemy, oh God, that is designed to tear us apart. Oh God, that the enemy meant for what? Turn the wrong for your glory. I will declare God that our families, oh God, shall go from strength to strength and from glory to glory. Help 
supposed to be kind to one another. And that's what I say, so tell love in the world. You don't have anything good to say, God, keep our mouths shut. Yes, Lord. Lord, we speak love in this atmosphere. We speak love in this atmosphere, oh God. We speak love in this atmosphere. Love, 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 love. Lord, I pray, God, that when we leave this place, oh God, that love will continue following us in our family, in our community, oh God. We need love, love, love in Jamaica. We say Jamaica and we love, but we need your love, oh God. Break down selfishness, break down division, even of God. We need unity in this land, God. Eternal Father, bless our land. We call upon you to bless our land. But God will send me for our land. We need unity as a people. Help us to care for one another, children. Help us to pray for one another, family. Oh Jesus.
Yes, brothers and sisters, I'd be glad that in Christ alone we stand. For all of the ground is sinking sand. And standing in Him, brothers and sisters, try as the devil may. Hallelujah. 
Aleluya. Aleluya. When I look into your holiness, when I gaze into your lovely face, when everything that surrounds me becomes shadows in the light of you, when I found the joy of reaching you, and my will becomes enthroned in your love, and everything that surrounds me becomes shadows in the light of you.
as he would often times to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 30, the Bible tells, And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Yes, Jesus sung song. Yes, he was a singer. Shall we praise the Lord? Hallelujah. They sung a hymn, and then they went out to the Mount of Olives. Now, John 18 and verse 2 tells us, And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place. For Jesus oftentimes resorted to fear with his disciples. It is telling me something else, that Judas is one of the only persons who could find Jesus up the dark. But the Bible says that Judas knew the place. This place now became forever famous, having been the scene where Jesus went through his agony. He fought of the struggle, met his betrayal, and became prepared to face his final trial, which is the cross. Many people may think that it was on the cross Jesus won the victory over death and over hell and over the grave, but no. It was in the garden of Gethsemane that Jesus won the victory. Many people may think that it was on the cross that Jesus drank the bitter cup. But no, it was in the garden that Jesus drank the bitter cup for sin. It was in the garden when Jesus, brothers and sisters, won the victory over the cross, over the, over the cross and over death. And he was ready, made himself ready to face the cross. This is the problem, that's the problem with some of us. That we wait until the cross comes to prepare ourselves for the cross. But Jesus has already won the victory in the garden. Here, what the Bible says about the struggle. Matthew 26 and verse 44 says that three times Jesus went away and prayed the same thing. Amen. About the bitter cup. Verse 26, verse 44, and he left them, we were speaking of his disciples, and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. What are these words? Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass away from me. Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass away from me. Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass away from me. But not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. In other words, you see that though Jesus was a hundred percent God and a hundred percent man, Jesus was backed in a corner. He was pushed to his limit. But when he saw your sin and my sin, and when he saw that there was no other way, he says, Lord, if there is no other way, not my will, but thy will be done. In the cup was the wrath of God to be poured out upon Jesus, not for himself, but for the sins and the sinfulness of the whole world. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Romans 6 and verse 23. Jesus was going to incur God's wrath of death upon himself as he would be placed upon the cross. And after he left the garden of Gethsemane, there was no escape for him. And that's why God could not look upon him. But when Jesus cried out unto him and said, Eli, Eli, Lama Shabashtadai. In other words, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God turned his back upon him because he could not look upon his son, brothers and sisters. Jesus. The very creation 
could not take the pressure. And so the sun blocked out. The earth quaked because Jesus was going to bear it, not for himself, but for you and me. I hear the sun like a caught the vision, and he said, oh, no! He went for me, and now he set me free. And although I have so many, many sins, Jesus washed them up and he pardoned me. It was in the garden of Gethsemane, in the garden of Gethsemane, that he felt the awful anguish for the sins of the world, that God's wrath was poured out upon him. Christ was turned so much burden and so much affliction for our sins. The righteous one dying as a substitutionary sacrifice for the unrighteous and the guilty. Hear what 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 21 says. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, but the right that he might be made, the righteousness of God that he might be made, the righteousness of God in him. You know what Galatians 3 verse 30 to 14 tells us? Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having made curse, having been made curse for us, for it is written, curse is everyone that hung upon a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through, through faith. Christ felt the pain. Here, this is why it could be it could be like a lamb to the slaughter and a sheep before the shearer, because he was not going to resist. He was not going to repudiate. That's why when Pilate looked at him and said, You say you have power, show your power. Not. Jesus was silent because he has already won the battle. Shall we put it on the ball? When Herod wanted David to, 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 to pick him and to mock him, and Herod wanted to see Jesus a long time ago because he had sent for Jesus, and Jesus went and told Herod, Go tell that fox. Amen. So when he saw Jesus now, he was glad. And the first thing he had said, work me a miracle now. But Jesus said nothing. And Herod said, you know that I have the power to condemn you. Or to kill you, Jesus said, you have no power. Unless it is given to you from above. Shall we praise the Lord? So when Jesus, when the time came for his trial, Jesus was ready. Let me hear so ready. Hear Jesus in Matthew 26 and verse 38. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Amen? And so Jesus was very sorrowful. And in our text in Luke 22 and verse 44, it says, And then in agony, he prayed. Amen? He prayed more earnestly, and he sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. It is said that a person can be so stressful that your pores can be open and instead of sweat coming out, blood came out. And it is said that a similar thing happened in the cross when the pierce side, because out came blood and water instead of just blood, meaning that he died of the pressure and broken heart, according to the scientists. But Jesus was not going to give up. Shall we pray? <laughs> because down the road there were you, the fornicator. There were you, the adulterer. There were you, the robber and the king. There were you, and a matter of fact, they had a bone to pick with Satan. Because Satan mash up the things in the garden of Eden. Of he destroyed the first Adam. And where he destroyed the first Adam, he will be the cotton, shall we praise the Lord, as the second Adam, and restore everything that the devil has broken down. Shall we praise the Lord? You see, every child of God 
Amen. This is where Jesus fought on this job. And every child of God needs a Gethsemane. Shall I pray the Lord? Amen. A place of white press. A place where we pour out our heart. And if you don't have a God in a Gethsemane, find one. Tell your neighbor to find one. Shall I pray the Lord? For it is in the garden of Gethsemane where we meet God face to face. It is in the garden of Gethsemane where Jesus fought on his struggle and we need to fight out our struggles. It is in the garden of Gethsemane where Jesus fought his depression and we need to fight our depression there too. Brothers and sisters, it is in the garden of Gethsemane where Jesus got ready to face the enemy and that's where we need to get well, brothers and sisters, some people but to, to face our enemies, amen, and to face our crucifixion, and to face, brothers and sisters, that which will, will come to us in our trying times. We must not wait until our Judas come and our crucifixion is ready. We must begin to fight out this struggle. That's why Jesus said, pray that you enter not into temptation. There are some of us, it's when we get into temptation and try and try and times, we are saying, Father God, help me now. Hey, shall we praise the Lord? So Jesus said, pray. Let's enter into temptation. We must always go to our Gethsemane and our knees, even when others do not want to come with us. Amen, shall we praise the Lord? For some of us are embarking on journeys that are challenging, that are testing, that will test your mental, will test your home, will test your family, will test your marriage, will test your life, will test you in your Christianity. But we need to have a good serenity where we fight our whole body. And when the child comes, and when the child is fierce enough, we are smiling and saying, hey, Shall we praise the Lord? It is a good serenity. That Jesus defeated his Judas. Oh, shall we praise the Lord? And some of us have some Judases. It was at Gethsemane that Jesus defeated his Caiaphas. It was in Gethsemane where Jesus defeated his Pilate and defeated his Herod. It was in Gethsemane. Amen. He defeated the opposing crowd. Amen. And it was at Gethsemane. That Jesus won it over his crucifixion. It was at Gethsemane that Jesus became victorious over the devil. And so, brothers and sisters, when he came according to Psalm 24, and he said, Knock on the door of heaven. And he said, Open up and let the King of Glory come in. You think that it was on the cross that he won the victory. And they said, Who is the King of Glory? And he said, The Lord of hosts. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. He shall praise the Lord is the King of glory. Open up and let him in. Shall we praise the Lord? It was a good ceremony that the devil is, that the devil was defeated. And he took away the keys when he went down into hell and saw the devil and led captive in the captive. He has already won the victory. Shall we praise the Lord? Come on, shall we pray? Put on the blood good friend. Put on the blood of my good friend. So I'm going to find that Jesus was saying, Go ahead. Try the nails in my hands. Laugh at me. Where it stands. For the day will come when you will see. For I will rise again. For eight not power on earth you can drop me down so when Friday with the gloom and dark amen Sunday with the resurrection and that's why this Sunday I'm preaching on the topic jailbreak you want to hear that one shall we praise the Lord Woo! shall we praise the Lord so when Judas was coming in when the Roman sword at them was coming in with his deceit of them, with his false kiss. Hey, shall we praise the Lord? When Judas was coming in, they met with Caiaphas, the high priest, and the and the and Herod, the 
are coming through heaven and coming in with the lantern and the kitchen beach. The person Jesus was coming to meet them. Because Jesus has already smoked on the shovel. He was ready to come the rain. Come on, the power of Gethsemane. Shall we praise the Lord? By coming in the Gethsemane. Let me put you in the Gethsemane. Zion, you need a get sending Shall we praise the Lord? We need a get sending For there is so much devil from hell that is let loose upon this earth. I was listening this evening as I was coming on, coming here, about the number of over 200 Christians that were killed. There is persecution already started in the church. People are, are persecuting the church. And I understand a particular community now saying that the church that they are charging the church for verbal abuse and other kind of abuse. Amen. Let me tell you something. Try, try time coming for the Christian and for the church. But in the name of Jesus, we are ready. Oh, shall we praise the Lord? We are ready. We are ready. Shall we praise the Lord? So all the cool Christian men, all the non fasting praying Christian men, you better get ready because they will be mashed up. If you're not ready, shall we praise the Lord? We must step up the Bible in the name of Jesus and set this time call not but by prayer and fasting. You must lift up the Bible and show time a warrior. A Christian warrior. With the weapon, in a middle right time, I am a warrior, a Christian warrior. With me, a weapon, in a middle right time, warrior, warrior. Some people are like getting together and weak, and weak, and weak. 
No Gethsemane. Shall we praise the Lord? In the power of Gethsemane, brothers and sisters, Gethsemane is where we get to be alone with God. Amen. Shall we praise the Lord? Verse 41 says, And he was with John. From then on, we took Peter, James, and John with him. He was with John. A, a stone throw from them, and he wanted to be alone with God. Every Christian must learn how to be alone with God. There are days I like to be with Christ alone. I can tell him of my troubles all along. Amen, shall we praise the Lord. There are days to fast and pray. There are days to get intimate with Jesus. And we can only get intimate with God and get intimate with Jesus when we have a get enemy. I have a place at my house just in repair. Amen, that's a sacred place. I tell her, I don't come around here just any and any hour. Shall we praise the Lord for another that brings God around here, son? Shall we praise the Lord? Hey! Come on. That's where you get personal. That's where I lie on my belly. Hey, shall we praise the Lord? That's where I meet Jesus. That's where I connect. Intimacy. You know what intimacy means? Intimacy. In other words, you need it. Shall we praise the Lord before God? Wait. Someone will understand what they're talking about. Hello. That's exactly for me. Shall we praise the Lord? It is where we meet God. Do you have a place like that? Yes. Shall we praise the Lord? The power of Gethsemane. Gethsemane is a place where we receive angelic visitation. Look at verse 43. The Bible tells us, And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven and strengthened him. Yes. Hey, shall we praise the Lord? Gethsemane is like the place at Peter where Jacob met him and took the stone and said he met God and when he went here he said surely the presence of the Lord is in this place and I know not because he saw angels ascending and descending and you can say is here there is angels ascending taking up messages and bringing my blessing yeah. oh can I preach here to my God oh. praise the Lord that's where Jesus received the strength. When he went back to one of here, he got the strength from to carry the cross. Where he said, I went to the fountain, a Calvary fountain, and it was blood drops all the way. And when the beat he didn't pick up on the cross, and he went back to Calvary. Because he met angels. Angels visitation. Shall we praise the Lord? Angelic visitation. That's where Jacob met God for the first time. Jacob, that means the silver supplanter. Hey, when he met God and he came back and he went back somewhere else and God said, No, you can't survive here, so go back to your Gethsemane. He said, To the many strange gods that are among you, shall we praise the Lord and go back to better. The house of God, or the presence of God, the place where you can say, Surely the presence of the Lord. You saw that tonight is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can feel the touch of angel wings. I see glory. Hallelujah. I face the sure. Of the Lord. You shouldn't sing in a church if you don't have no gets in it. You shouldn't play music. You should not preach. You should not testify. You should not even walk in the church. You don't let the pastor talk. Shall we praise the Lord? We need, we need, we need to get saved. Stop now? No. Don't stop. 
Shall we pray for the Lord? In Gethsemane is a place where we become broken before God. In verse 44, the Bible tells us, and being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down on the ground. If this is not brokenness before God, I don't know what is brokenness. The man prayed until instead of sweat coming out, blood came out. The Bible tells us the Lord no longer sacrifice. The sacrifices of God is a broken and a contrite heart that the Lord cannot despise. Oh, Jesus. Hey, some of us coming like this in my moves. We do, we do, we do, we lie, we think, we back, mouth, we mouth, so we decide. We don't want to tell anything and come in a God's presence. No brokenness. When last I cry, yeah. I hear the cry, I'm Christian. Yeah. I cry, I cry, I'm Christian is dangerous. If no tears can come to your eyes, and some of them in the dust and the praise the Lord. And the hallelujah. This will try. Hallelujah. We need to learn to be broken. Holiness. Holiness is what I long for. Brokenness. Brokenness is what I need. Amen. What's the other one? Righteousness. Righteousness. Is what I long for. The Christian need to be put on church. And that's where Jesus became broken before God. In throughout in everything. The power of getting. Never preach a sermon before. Just be here today. You know, Mama said, Take me to go for the woman. That's why I have to humble myself. I have to answer when I got tears. I'm not broken. Hello, brothers and sisters. Shall I pray for the Lord? With the Roman army now came with their Judas and their swords. And as I said before, their lantern and their kitchen beach. Jesus stepped out. They had understand one of the one of the, the disciples of Jesus. Run, let me close. John Mark they said. When they found him in run naked. When he saw the soldiers there, God of them, can go to watch with Jesus for one hour. And when Peter saw what happened, Peter took up, Peter who said, Lord, I will go with you, took out his sword, cut off the every soul right here. And Jesus said, Look at that. It's a spiritual war here. Yeah. There are some Christians who understand we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. When demons come, they can enjoy a knife. But Jesus has put up that. And some things are still happening in your nation and in your community and in your family. And your things are a problem. They try to intellectualize it out. And you try to use psychology and psychiatry to get rid of it. I went to my school and did the meeting. I went to the office, I signed some documents. 
And then when I was coming back, as I reached the spot, the tree fall. Tell me if I'm not the devil that. It just barely scratched up the car. Because I, the Lord had never taken this in action. Shall I praise the Lord? You cannot fight that. Just so for some. You have to have the angel of the Lord and jump it round about you. So when trying to come, Jesus ready for that. Shall I praise the Lord? Jesus ready for that. That's why Isaiah caught the vision. And Isaiah said, I want some preaching about there's something in the devil. Isaiah said he was reproached for my transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep, we are born astray. We are turned everyone to our own way. But the Lord has laid upon him the iniquities of us all. So he was ready for that. The power of the sin. Come here, I pass. Come with this Sanhedrin council. Shall we praise the Lord? Come with the religious community. All the enthusiastical generals, come with them. Be ready for that. And if you can manage, go take your pilot and the rules and come. And if pilot can manage, go call the run. And if you're right there, man, you send them up to buy a lot. They pass the day. Which is precisely what happened. They took him to buy a task, they pass the manager. They took him to the pilot, pilot, they are manager. They send him to the pilot, they are manager. They send him back to pilot, pilot, they are manager. And pilot take water and send him to wash me and open it. And the wife said, I touch Jesus. For I have a big gun tonight. And the Lord said, No touch him. What? Yeah. Oh, I told you what I was going to preach on um, Sunday morning, but I didn't tell you what. Amen. Yeah. Uh, what, what I'm going to preach on Good Friday morning? No, not JMP. That is, that is Friday morning. Resurrection. Shall I praise the Lord? Friday morning is the man found Barabbas. Shall I praise the Lord? And what that means is that Jesus is the substitute. It should have been Barabbas, but it is Jesus. Shall we praise the Lord? They're not, they're not find no salt in there. But because of Gethsemane, yes, yes. he was ready for that. Stand at the feet. Shall we praise the Lord? 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 